Hi friends, welcome back to Origami Review, or specifically the IOIO IO 2021 review on how I won the silver medal. Now, this episode is going to be dedicated to the tessellations. Um, there were, uh, was it, three different tessellation tasks, and I'm going to explain how I tackled them as I am not a tessellation folder. Uh, previous to this, the only tessellations I've done are I think actually for the previous IOIO um, in which I didn't actually complete that many. I might have done one or two. Um, so I was very, very inexperienced coming into this competition uh, for tessellations. And I'm going to be honest, after seeing the round two challenges, I was a little bit scared. But yeah, I'm going to dive in on how I tackled that fear tackled the lack of experience, and still made it out. So, how did I tackle my greatest weakness, tessellations? Now, I wanna give a huge shout out to Elon, and actually, obviously I'm showing this book right here, um, as I bought this book to basically study and prepare a little bit for the competition. Um, right as I saw those tasks for the tessellations, I knew that I needed to do research, needed to ask for help, get all the advice I could on doing tessellations so that I could produce good results. And so grabbing this book, which had recently come out, was a great decision. You know, I read through it, practiced some stuff, kind of understood how, what the, you know, like best known method is to start tackling different units, um, different modules in tessellations, all that sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, big shout out to Elon, helped me out quite a bit on the questions I had, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, and I think that's the first piece of advice I would give is to many folders who aren't into tessellations, if you do want to compete in IOIO, you're going to need to learn how to fold them. Um, and they are quite a different approach to you know, a representational origami. So yeah, do your research, get some practice in so that they won't be too scary. But yeah, they were quite scary originally for me. And let me talk about how I made it less scary. And so we're going to take a look at the first tessellation task. And this is called the Kaleidoscope Recursion by Edward Mistre Mistretta. Um, and now this tessellation is actually more of a recursion styled fold so it's not quite like i guess i don't know what it would be called but like a tiled tessellation or something now what's cool about this recursion is that as you can kind of tell this sequence um can go on forever uh if you don't know about recursion or haven't done like the taking it like a math class on it um you know you can just think of it as this pattern is repeating uh basically forever and until you, you have something called a stop. And so in this case, I went uh, three levels down on this fold. Um, there were a couple folds where they went, you know, a lot more. Um, there is some very creative takes on it, but let me explain this one. Now, this style of tessellation I was most comfortable with uh, because folding it is still kind of similar to things I had done with representational origami. Now, I wanted to still step it up a bit and try my best to get, you know, a really nice looking result. So despite the concept being, you know, relatively simple, uh, it's a pattern of squares, you know, getting smaller and smaller forever. What could I do to make mine look different? And you can see here I have these test folds. Um, now, one of them, let's see if the camera can pick it up. It, this is pretty worn. This was my first fold where I just followed the instructions to the T. And here is my second fold where, you know, it's not quite as clean, but you might notice there is no crease lines through this first layer in the recursion. And on the back side, you can see that these corners are clean as well versus the first test fold where we have quite blatant creases running through that first layer. And so I decided, hey, maybe that is a way 
where I can use my existing strength in making things clean to get a cool result. And to do that, to get the first layer without doing creases through here, I basically had to come up with my own sequence for pre-creasing um, and collapsing to get it in a way where it would be really, really clean on a surface. And so you can see, especially from me holding it here, obviously the inner layers, since it's a recursive sequence, has creases, but the outer layers are perfectly clean. And even on this side, there's no diagonal crease going through the center. Um, and it kind of just accentuates as the border of this tessellation. It makes it look really nice. And if you've seen my photos of this, you can actually uh, see the one where I shine light through the tessellation. And it really stands out um, with the lack of creases through the center on the effect it made. And so... Again, despite me not being able to be as creative with these tessellations due to my lack of experience, I still practiced and found a way to spice it up a little bit and therefore maintain like a pretty decent score. You know, I, I, I don't think I meddled in this. I don't think I meddled in any of the tessellations, but I still received a relatively high score, which definitely benefited my second placement. And the next tessellation we have here is the It Is Wednesday tessellation designed by Arseny Kazimiakin from Belarus. Um, and this one is a step up um, in the, I guess, in the direction of complexity a bit. And this is quite more of the tessellation that you might be used to seeing and a style that I have little experience in. So this one is really cool. And as you can see, my test fold here actually isn't the entire tessellation. This is just like the center and like little perimeter outside the center or basically half a molecule through each of the other um, sections. And this, I guess I decided to do uh, because I didn't have all the time in the world to fully fold out a whole tessellation. So instead of folding the whole thing, I decided to just fold part of it. And especially with this one where the molecule here in the center is repeated, you know, the same around the edges and then a little bit in the corner. Um, I knew that if I had the center one, I could probably do the others since they would collapse in a very similar manner. And that assumption ended up being true, thankfully or at least it definitely helped with this one. And so this was uh, quite interesting as, you know, I wasn't sure how well I could interpret um, the folding. And basically for this task, they gave us the crease pattern and like a little bit of a folding sequence, but it was mostly from the crease pattern that you had to determine which layers to tackle first to get this spiral. Um, as you can see, there are quite a few that lay on top of each other. And actually to try to pre-crease everything in the correct way uh, is, is probably not the best way to go. Um, for example, like in this section here, it's much easier to fold this and collapse it in at once as you start to collapse the other sides. And so, you know, that's just more of a part of tessellation folding, where if you've done them before, you, you probably know what I mean. Uh, but if you haven't before, you especially want to think of it like I didn't want to fold too many unnecessary creases uh, through this just to keep it looking clean. As you can tell, I once again went for the clean look uh, because, you know, that's that's where my strength lied. So I played with that in achieving this tessellation. Um, but yeah, here my main point is that test folding, just this little section, helped me greatly and gave me a lot of confidence that I could just nail the crease pattern. Um, or solving the crease pattern for this tessellation when I got to it with my final paper. And so now let's take a look at this one here. Sorry for the reflection. But this one, right, it's folded from elephant hide. And I think the paper texture looks pretty good. It's not the most clean. You can kind of start to notice when you look closely some different indentations and then some slight gaps in some of the folds. Um, but overall, I think the presentation turned out pretty decent. 
Um, you know, there's no blatant mistakes around the areas. Everything is folded pretty tight. And my, my goal especially was to get these centers tight. Um, I thought to achieve the greatest aesthetic, I should focus on keeping these centers um, complete and making that star shape look really good. And yeah, I think I'm actually very happy with how this turned out. Um, obviously, I know that I can do better. And after seeing some of the other submissions, I realized there's actually quite a lot of creative things you can do, especially with these the back of the units where you can shape them out, you can puff them up. Um, you can do a whole bunch of different things, just play around the shapes and do something other than leaving it like a two-dimensional tessellation. Uh, but yeah, no, I really think the patterns look cool. And after folding this one, I had quite a, a lot more confidence going into these tessellations. You know, I was very surprised by myself that the folding sequence kind of clicked for me. So once I was about a third of the way done, I finished the rest of it in like a four hour or five hour sitting, um, kind of all at once. And I found it to be so much fun to fold. And so because it started to become fun versus how it started, which at first it was very scary, um, once it became fun, I think I was able to get a pretty decent result out of this. But yeah, really nice tessellation, a really fun one to fold. Um, and yeah. All right, so here is the last tessellation as well as, in my opinion, the hardest one of the set. It was also worth the most points. So this was worth 12 points, which is like considerably more than any of the representational um, folds. I think, right, the squid was 10, or maybe the squid was also 12. Um, but say like the moose was seven, the lynx was five. So this one was worth a ton of points. And so I knew I had to do, you know, it pretty well and try to get as many of those 12 points as I could to help my score. Now, once again, you noticed that I have folded the center of the tessellation. And I know since it's in the frame, I can't actually show you the back, but the back looks like this. And um, one neat thing about this tessellation is that actually all the units that are made up with it are on the grid. So it's from a hexagon. Um, so I guess it would be a hex grid. Um, so there, there was nothing that I had to pre-crease outside of that hex grid. Or there might have been a couple things. Um, uh, yeah, there, there were only a couple areas where I actually had to fold outside of the hex grid. And I think all of those units are actually in this test fold I have here. So it's mostly within the center. Um, now, I actually folded like more grid units here than the other tessellation, thinking that it would be more of the, you know, I would be practicing more of the tessellation. But as you can see, I actually have only done the center unit and I didn't touch any of the outside. Um, so after figuring this one out, at first I thought, okay, I have this down, I have the sequence down. It worked pretty well. I know what to do. But once I got to the actual one and started having to do what I call like these weaves or the stripes um, or however you would like to describe them, I realized that I did not test fold enough. <laughs> and unfortunately, I was also on a time crunch, um, which I'll probably explain in a different video. Um, so I did not have the time to go back and try again and refold and test fold. I think the better approach here would actually to have gone back and test folded the edge sections or say like this module in the corner here, just to practice it out to get the sequence in my head. Um, Elephant Hide is a really tough paper. And when I was first trying to understand how to collapse these portions, I almost tore the Elephant Hide. So if you are familiar with Elephant Hide, that'll stand out to you that, yeah, I, I wore the paper out quite a bit trying to understand how to collapse this. And I think the greatest analogy I can use to kind of explain how this tessellation collapses is that it felt like I was weaving the paper despite it being a single hexagon. 
So weaving different flaps together to form um, these shapes. And you can kind of look at it and see how a lot of the layers are tucked in between each other. So it is very much like weaving something. Um, so yeah, that was extremely cool, but extremely challenging at the same time. Um, and yeah, the back here, like you can't tell, but even in the center, there are bunches of layers that are stacked underneath each other. And oftentimes you needed it to be layered correctly so that it could actually collapse a different portion without getting stuck underneath another flap. Um, so especially with my lack of experience in folding tessellations, this was quite a challenge to understand and to find you know, what I should actually crease first. Um, I did take it still as a center first and then crease outside. Um, but yeah, at, at points, it was very, very confusing to me, like what to do. I think, um, especially for this like first layer over here outside the center, you know, I had pleats running across each other all the time, just so things would lay flat. And then later I would have to like unfold the pleat, uh, push a bunch of things out. And that's what made it feel like weaving different portions together. Once I got to like the edges and I realized, all right, we're going to complete this tessellation. I was very much relieved um, and actually noticed that a lot of these external units, it was very similar to collapsing some of the sides. So at that point I had the sequence down. Um, so yeah, if I did have the opportunity to fold another one, it probably would have turned out a lot better than this did. However, I am still pretty happy with the results of this. It is mostly clean. Um, as you can see from afar, it might look really good. Um, but if you start looking a lot closer, you'll notice some small gaps um, where, you know, the creases are kind of exposed. Like here, there's an exposed paper layer. Um, same thing a little bit down here. That kind of takes away from the overall aesthetic and probably what dropped my score a little bit. Um, overall, though, I think it was pretty okay. I did feel a little bit insecure about this fold at first. So what I actually did is I went to past IOIO galleries to see what the winners and the top scorers uh, tessellations look like, you know, um, did this have to be, you know, crazily innovated where all the layers are pushed out or something like that? Um, or could it still be like relatively clean and still score well? And so what I saw was, um, at least for, my level of tessellation folding, it would probably be the most safe play to just fold it as cleanly as possible and get a really good picture from it. And so that was the approach I took, especially for this one. And it did take me quite a long time to fold. Um, so at that point, I was like, all right, I might not score the full 12 points, but maybe if I can get 10 out of those 12 points, that'll be good enough for a top 10 placement, which originally I was going for. Um, but yeah, thankfully it did score relatively well and it helped me secure, I guess it helped me secure that top 10 position like I thought, right? Uh, but second place. But yeah, man, this was quite the tessellation. And sorry, I forgot to mention, this is the Sisyphus tessellation designed by Peter Keller. Um, if Maybe if you're a tessellation folder, you probably recognize the name Peter Keller. Uh, Peter has a ton of amazing tessellation designs, and there are some that are way more complicated than this one. So it's kind of, you know, tempting for me now that I've done this one, I kind of want to try some other ones, but man, those are a total project. Those would be very, very difficult, um, but maybe I'm up to a fun challenge to really push myself with folding tessellations. That would be some good ones to try out. And yeah, for this task, um, it there was no sequence at all. We were just given the crease pattern, um, unlike the other one where we kind of had a direction of you know, where to start or collapse. Um, this one, pure crease pattern, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty wild, um, even just interpreting that crease pattern. But I am glad I was able to complete it. And I saw there was a lot of people who completed this as well. So yeah, major props to all the non-tessellation folders who were still able to complete this because, you know, you should definitely 
uh, give yourself like a round of applause for attempting this tessellation. And to wrap up this IOI review, I kind of want to just talk to uh, the people who are thinking of doing IOIO, but might be like me who are not tessellation folders and who might even be dreading the tessellation section of IOIO. Um, now, yeah, it is really intimidating to be in a position where you know you're not, you're, this is not your strong suit. Uh, these might be your first tessellations ever, um, and it can be really intimidating. Um, however, tessellations after doing these three can be very, very fun. Despite being challenging, I saw myself develop, you know, quite a love for solving these crease patterns. Um, it was, you know, I've solved so many crease patterns, but doing tessellations as crease patterns was kind of a new avenue for me to explore. And I really appreciate the design behind some of these units and the weaves and the patterns, the recursions, you know, all of these things. It was really cool to me especially since I hadn't done a whole lot of this. So it kind of opened up a pathway in my brain to really appreciate these tessellations. And I think because I was able to think that way, it helped me complete these tessellations with more enjoyment versus like fear or dread. And I definitely think that if you're able to do them in a more positive note, it will probably help your score in the long run. Um, and especially in a competitive sense, it helps you know ease out some of your nerves uh, about these tessellations and yeah i definitely recommend doing these test folds you know take the time and effort to turn something that's scary into a lot more digestible pieces so that it's no longer scary to you and you have full confidence that you can fold it and then innovate on it like in this one to get a better score but yeah overall these tessellations, man, I really loved them. Uh, really loved making them. You know, I even did, I did this one like three times just to kind of pick through, uh, you know, what I wanted <laughs> um, out of it. And yeah, try some tessellations, guys. Yeah, it really might not be something you thought you would enjoy, but you never know. It's it's quite a lot of fun to try something new. Um, but yeah, that wraps up this episode of IO IO review. And I hope my take on basically the weakest portion of my IOIO IO, IO submissions um, helped you out or maybe inspired you or broke down some tessellation, you know, thought processes that you might have uh, very similar to mine. But yeah, thank you for watching. Look out for the next part of IOIO IO review where we're going to go over some more spicy folds. All this origami, all this origami. All this origami got me going kamikaze now I'm